Welcome back. This is the day the Lord's made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. In this video, I'm going to talk about DCU's Physics Unit 6, Sample B problem. So I'm going to walk through uh, a few different problems from different sections here from week 31 to week 33. So start with net charge of an atom. So this is the second B-level question, uh, second B-level type of question which I come across. So a sample question would be, a current carrying wire has 17.794 amps moving through it. How many electrons move through a cross-section area of the wire during one second? Answer in XL electrons. And XL, we're given this as 10 to the 18th. Uh, the reason we're having an answer in XL electrons is because that's a lot of electrons moving, and so we want to make the number uh, smaller. So you don't have to worry about, like, did I type in the right number is zeros? So we're given 17.794 amps moving through the wire. We want to know how many electrons it moves. So we remind ourselves for the solution that one amp is one coulomb of charge. So we have 17.794 amps, which means we have 17.794 coulombs of charge moving per second. Our charge is becoming from electrons moving through it. Every individual electron has this charge. So even though the electron is negative, all we want here is total number of electrons so we can ignore the negative. It's because we just want total absolute value, how many electrons are moving through it. So to solve this, we would take the total charge of moving through per second, because that's how many amps, divided by the charge of an individual electron, and that'll tell us the total electrons. So 17.794 amps, which is 17.794 coulombs, divided by the individual charge of electron, gives us 1.11 times 10 to the 20th electrons. That's all electrons. Turning into X electrons, we're gonna divide this by a billion twice. So, because a billion times a billion is an exo electron. So, when we divide by 10 to the 18th, that's just like subtracting off of this exponent here. So, that becomes 10 to the second. Move it over so you can plug it in. 111 exo electrons will move through this wire per second. Next, here's I'm going to do a couple sample electric field questions. So, question. At a distance of 0 0.93 meters away from a point source charge, and what's a point source charge? We're talking about like an atom or something, one like sphere, and it has a certain charge on it, and it's gonna be like emanating some field away from it. We wanna know the strength of the field at 0.93 meters away. So, so at a distance of 0.93 meters away from a point source charge, what is the strength of the field in newtons per coulomb? We're told that the point source charge has this charge, 1.48 times 10 negative eight coulombs. Uh, for these kind of questions here, I actually raised the uh, point source charge to be pretty large, um, just so that your answer could be reasonable. So if I actually used an atom's typical charge, it would not be something you could plug in to uh, canvas to get an answer. Because if you think about one electron having a charge of 1.6819, you know, we're talking about a serious change in electrons being lost or gained here. So anyway, our important stuff we know, charge here, distance away, we want to know the field strength. So for a point source charge, it's like gravity, where before in first semester, the field strength is equal to capital G times the mass divided by how far we are. Instead of a capital G, we have a new, we have a K constant, which is uh, for electric field strength. And instead of the mass of the planet, we have the charge. So our K constant is nine times 10 to the ninth. That's just a constant. That's just the value of K. Our point source charge, 1.4 to the negative eighth coulombs, divided by the distance away, 0.93 squared, our answer is 154 newtons per coulomb. That would be the field strength at that location. Again, it should make sense that as you get further away from the point source, the field strength weakens, and as you get closer, it's gonna get stronger. So if this number on the bottom changes to get bigger or smaller, it'll change how strong the field is. Another sample question for this section. We have a charged particle. So inside of a field, this charged particle experiences a force 120 newtons. So we have some electric field, we put a point charge in and it feels some force. And we know that the field strength at this location is 983 newtons per coulomb. It wants to know what is the charge of the particle in coulombs. So our field strength is 983 newtons per coulomb. The charge feels 120 newtons. So again, think about the field strength. What this is saying here, this 983 newtons is saying, if you had one coulomb of charge, it would feel a force of 983 newtons. So we don't feel quite a 983 newtons, we don't feel 120 newtons. This tells us that we don't have a whole coulomb because one coulomb would feel this force, so we have less than a coulomb. Again, our solution, electric field strength is how much force do you feel per coulomb? That's what electric field strengths are measured in. So we can think of this as a proportion. 
993 newtons per coulomb equals 105 newtons per how many coulombs? Do a little rearranging, a little algebra, and we find that the point source charge is approximately 0.122 coulombs. That's how big the charge would be. All right, sample electric potential question. If you think about electric potential, just think of like work from electric fields. How much work can be done by electric fields? So it's an extension of this before. So again, work equals force times the distance. But now instead of the distance being actual meters, the distance is voltages moved. So here we're told we have a charged particle is located at some place in the electric field below. Oh, this one has a picture. Here's our picture. So we have an electric field being generated by a positive plate and a negative plate. So in between your electrons and charged particles want to move to different sides based on what they are. So we're told that uh, a charged particle is located at A. So down here, we have our charged particle located right here at location A, which is on A volts. So it has a charge of 4.74 coulombs, and it takes A2 joules of energy to move it from A to E. So again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this particle from location A to E, and it takes us a certain amount of work. So moving from location A to location E takes A2 joules of work. Do take note, it doesn't take any work to move up or down on the line. So if I wanna move A up on the line, no work done, because we're not changing potential energy. It's no different than gravity, like if I walk across a flat surface, it doesn't take me any work, you know, because I'm not changing potential energy, all right? So we can think of E just being directly across. We're gonna to have to pull particle A, which has a positive charge, over to E. We're saying it takes A2 joules of energy to move 4.74 coulombs. We wanna know what the scale of the line is. What is the voltage field lines down there below? What is A equal to? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find out how much work, or we actually are, are given the work, we gotta find the total change of voltage and then scale it. So we're gonna find the voltage change and then scale it down. So the work that's done depends upon how big of a charge are we moving, how far are we moving it? We're already told that it took 82 joules of energy to move 4.74 coulombs of charge. So we can find the voltage change by putting the 82 joules in for our work. Our coulomb charge is 4.74. We can find the voltage. And the voltage turns out to be 17.3 volts. That's going from A to 5A. So we take 17.3 volts from here to there. The question is, what's my scale down here? What are these in intervals of? So we move from A to 5A. That's moving 4A, because 5A minus A is 4A. So 4 moves equals 17.3 volts. Each move was the V, 4.3 volts on our scale. All right, voltage, current, and resistance. What is the current in amps moving through the series circuit below? We have the resistance is given and the voltage. I haven't talked about this quite yet. Let me real quick just mention what's going on here. So, excuse me. <coughs> okay, we have a circuit here. <coughs> excuse me. We have a circuit here. We have uh, some voltage being provided. This is like an outlet, providing some motivation. And then we have some circuits with, uh, which has some series, uh, sorry. We have a circuit with uh, some resistors inside of it. So we're told that we have a resistor here, resistor here, 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 and here. We have five resistors. This is kind of like you as you look at your day. You get up from your bed, you look at your day like I got A to do, B to do, C to do, D to do, and E to do. And so in a series circuit, all these resistors are gonna add together because you gotta go through all of them. You're saying I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. All these things added to be the total resistance. So in a series circuit, we just add up all the resistors saying, here is the total resistance for the day. I've got to do a physics homework assignment. I have to write a physics paper. I have to do something else, you know, blah, 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 blah. So we're gonna up all the resistances together and find out that the total resistance for the day is 173 ohms. So if we add up all those resistances, we're gonna to have to encounter 173 ohms. Again, remember this is the anti-motivation. All right, we're told that the voltage is 88 volts. That's how much motivation is given for the electrons to start, 88 volts of motivation. The amount of current then depends upon both those things. We have 88 volts that are motivating us. We have 173 ohms that are anti-motivating us. How much current shows up? 88 divided by 173, 0 0.51 amps. So again, a quick note, you can have less than an amp here. You don't have to have a full amp. So we often actually measure things in milliamps 
uh, especially for electronics, we don't have a whole lot of current moving through there that would blow the circuit out. So another sample question, just like the last one, what is the current in amps moving to the circuit below? And current depends upon how much voltage do we have, how much motivation, how much distance are we going to encounter? So our resistance we had, A is 42, B is 16. So these two things are added together, 42 plus 16, we have 58 ohms of total resistance. We only have five volts of motivation. So same as the last one, our resistance is 42 plus 16, that's 58 ohms, voltage is five, five volts divided by 58 ohms, our current is 0 0.086 amps. This time I don't have a picture, we just have the description. We're told that a wire has 16.2 amps of current and a voltage is 73 volts, and we want to know the resistance. So we're looking for how much resistance is in the wire. Well, we're just gonna rearrange our last equation. So we have current of 16.2 amps, our voltage is 73 volts, we want to solve for R. A little bit of algebra, 4.5 ohms resistance would result in 16.2 amps moving through a circuit. Last one on this video, the kilowatt hour. Again, as mentioned, this is a very important thing. Um, you'll be doing this kind of math your whole life, or you'll just be looking at your bill and be like, sure, you know, auto withdraw. <laughs> All right, question. How much does Mr. Lowe spend on electricity for his light bulbs at his house every year? Uh, again, these are not actual numbers, these are just representative numbers for the question. So on any given day, we're told that there are 11 light bulbs on for about three hours each. Each bulb is rated at 60 watts, and the cost here in Omaha, we're told is 0 0.13 cents or dollars uh, per kilowatt hour. And we have our standard 365 days. So we have some light bulbs being on for three hours a day. We have the wattage and we have the cost for the kilowatt hour. So again, the kilowatt hour is just what it sounds like. How many kilowatts times how many hours? That's the kilowatt hour. We do need to change the wattages to kilowatts and then find how many hours use it. Then we can find how much we actually bought. So, each bulb I'm using is 60 watts. That means that each one of those is 0 0.06 kilowatts. I have 11 bulbs on, each one's using 0 0.06, so collectively, 11 times 0 0.06, where we can think of it as like one, like one big light bulb using 0 0.66 kilowatts. So we have 11 things drawing this much energy, so it's 0 0.66 kilowatts being used, so per second. And every day we have it on for three hours. So the total kilowatts being used by the light bulbs, three hours a day, Kilowatt hours per day then is 1.98. We just take the kilowatts being used times the hours, and that'll be the kilowatt hours for the day. The year is 365 days. So we take that 1.9 kilowatt hours per day, multiply by 365, and we find that over the course of the year, this would be a little over 700 kilowatt hours being used. Each one here in Oma costs 13 cents. So we take 13 cents times how many we're buying, and looks like we're gonna spend about $94 annually on lighting these light bulbs in my house. So, all right, hope this helps you with some of those beloved questions. God's peace.